couple of minutes. I'd like to see you here this afternoon. Thank you everyone for making time to join us this Sunday afternoon for the webinar on Bokashi. We will be starting in a few minutes. I just still see a lot of participants just joining the call. So let's just give them a couple of minutes and we'll start off. Okay, it's three o'clock now, uh, so I'd like to start the webinar. Welcome to Green Cells monthly webinar. We have this webinar on varied topics, and um, that's conducted typically on the second Sunday of every month. We try to keep this, maintain this cadence of second Sunday. So just mark your calendars and watch out for our webinars every month. Um, we will have. Um, you know, varied topics for these webinars, which are of interest to most of us. And if you all have any topic that you all think of that would be interesting, do feel free to, you know, drop us a line either on our Facebook or um, send a mess text message to us or uh, reach us on our website and drop a note um, so that we can, you know, kind of cater to your uh, interests and select, you know, organize webinars that are interesting. And, uh, essentially trying to help people go green, because that is in line with our mission. And, um, but as we wait for uh, the participants, more, uh, more of the audience to join, I'm going to start a sh uh, share with you all a short video on um, Green Cell and the projects that we do. This will give you a, a quick uh, insight into the kind of activities that we do. Just bear with me a minute and I'll start the video.
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking time to join us today. My name is Geeta Prabhakar. I serve on the board of Green Cell, and this is a volunteer organization committed to raising awareness and helping everyone make sustainable choices in their green journey. Welcome today to our webinar on Bokashi composting. And as part of our efforts, we run several community projects like cleanup drives on the road. You know, we select some roads and we adopt a stretch of a road. We run for food rescues, recycling campaigns. Our objective is to help everyone uh, find a way to make in, uh, small and big changes in their daily life, which would help them to make more uh, sustainable choices and reduce on the negative impact on the environment and the natural world. Simply put, it's basically to help everyone go green. To this end, we have um, a YouTube channel where we do have all our past webinars available. We've conducted webinars on several uh, topics like ranging from composting, solar energy, um, a lot of topics on in the gardening arena, but also on recycling, on um, you know, like I said, solar energy, which helps us to understand the different kind of uh, investments and uh, activities we can do to help us reduce our um, carbon footprint. So um, our next webinar in, in uh, conjunction with what I just said is on sustainable and um, uh, investing and impact investing. We have uh, Nancy Sagar, who would be presenting this webinar to us on Jan 9th. Uh, that's the next year. And uh, we start off that new year with uh, a, a webinar on sustainable investment. And she would help us to understand the kind of things that we can do that will help us to fight this climate crisis that we are doing. What investments can we do? What are the actions we can actually take to help um, help us all. And we all, as we saw in the video earlier, it's it's a collective effort. It takes a, you know, it's not something that a one person can do. It's a team effort. And we really would like all of us to collaborate and make these changes happen. And today, um, our um, webinar is uh, being presented by none other than, other than Vijay Desai. I'm very happy to announce um, uh, into you know to be moderating this session because especially because Vijay is actually one of our very active uh, green cell volunteers himself. He is very, a practical conservationist and always looks for cost effective, uh, practical uh, methods of uh, taking care of the environment. He leads his his uh, company Workdays Green Team in Atlanta and contributes largely to the conservationist efforts that they do. He's also involved with Green Cell in a big way. Um, I'm just going to try and move this out of this. Uh, in a big way. He um, is involved with the food rescue program. And I'm going to take a couple of minutes here to explain the food rescue program that uh, Vijay is actively involved in. Uh, here we find that there are several uh, restaurants and food outlets, like the bagel shops, where at the end of the day, they have uh, bagels that have to either be trashed because they're not sold, but it could actually be channelized to a, to a more needy um, place where it would feed a lot of people. And this is where Green Cell steps in. We identify these uh, shops and the task that we have is simple. We need to pick up the these bagels or uh, donuts, or whichever is the kind of food that is available, vegetables from grocery stores like, uh, so we, you know, and which are um, which cannot be kept in the grocery store and they need to be used the same day and we have to take the someone has to take it from there and then reach it to a kitchen nearby a public kitchen um, so that's where we look for volunteers who would have a couple of hours time to donate and help us out in this effort so if you're able to um, you know come and help us with this kind of an effort just a question of being near the place of uh, where we can pick up these items uh, do reach out to us so that we can optimize our, you know, the driving that we would have to do to do the pickup and the drop-off. 
Um, so I'm looking forward really to uh, listening, for all of you to be listening to Vijay's journey in Bokashi composting, because we have in the past webinars talked about several different ways of composting, as you know. And um, this one is some a very true, I mean, a tried and tested method from, uh, and he's sharing his experiences with it. Um, Vijay has walked the path of Bukashi composting and he does it actively and he's going to be able to talk to us about it. Um, let's see, I'm trying to go to the next slide. Just a few housekeeping rules before we, um, I hand over the mic to Vijay. Uh, we will have all the attendees on mute so that we can hear the speaker clearly. If you have any questions during the presentation, do feel free to uh, send a chat message either on YouTube or Zoom with your question. We have volunteers monitoring these uh, Zoom and chat windows, and they will be getting our questions in front of the speaker, and we will have him answer the questions either during the presentation or at the end. And if, for whatever reason, you'll have questions after the presentation, when, you'll ask, when you start your journey of Bukashi composting, do drop us a line and we're green cell is there and Vijay is available to help answer those questions. Uh, without any further ado, I will hand it over to Vijay now. Uh, Vijay, welcome again to this webinar and thanks for making time to talk to us. Thanks, uh, thanks, Gita. Thanks for those kind words. So I'm going to take over sharing from you. And uh, give me one second here as I switch. I'm trying to stop sharing. Have you got yeah, it? Can you guys see? Yeah, can you can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. And give me one second. I want to make sure everything's okay. Cool. All right. So thank you everybody for uh, taking the time today, and uh, we're going to go uh, talk about the uh, this uh, Bokashi component. I'm uh, sorry. Just give me a minute while I move things off the screen. So we're going to talk about Bokashi composting, and as uh, um, Gita mentioned, I'm sort of practical person trying to do what I can. And what started me down this path is a uh, kind of an introspection that, you know, when you're born, you come to this world with about five, 10 pounds, something like that. By everything said and done, if you live eight years, by EPA estimate, all of us are going to generate about 75 tons of uh, trash. Uh, I can tell you I'm already up here based on my age and all that. So I'm trying to reduce this, this little uh, mountain here. Those who are younger obviously have, uh, you know, more opportunity to reduce the, uh, you know, their footprint as, as much as they can. Uh, so that's sort of where, what's driving me. Uh, so last, uh, I would say about four months, we went from that trash can, which, uh, uh, would take about 13 gallon bags. We used to replace them every uh, uh, three times a week to this little trash can here, which takes a six gallon bag and we, we hardly fill that. Uh, so how did we do that? And it's a family of four, everybody's home. We've got, uh, you know, uh, adult, semi-adult kids. And uh, we were able to do this with uh, very little uh, inconveniences and uh, additional time. And uh, so that's... Uh, that was our objective, and we are continuing to try to reduce our footprint even uh, more as much as we can. Um, so part of that is uh, there are two types of uh, uh, two groupings, if you will, of the uh, materials that we end up sending to the trash. Uh, what you have on the left is the inorganics, your paper, glass, plastic, all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of people do, you know, a lot of us do recycling. And uh, uh, then there is the organics, which we have always like, well, wow, that's a too much hassle. It smells, there is, uh, you know, pests and all that. So we tend to disregard this. A lot of us focus on this and, and not on this, including me. I, I didn't do any composting until, uh, you know, uh, recently. So uh, I won't go into details of this uh, inorganics. There is a deck that I, and I went through a, a recently did a presentation. Uh, you can go take a look at the presentation or the watch the video of how to do uh, recycling better and how to recycle more and more. Uh, so that's, that's a different topic. Uh, but then going, so today we are going to cover organic uh, recycling. And uh, that is largely your yard waste and kitchen scraps uh, is what, what I'm talk going to be uh, talking about today. Um, uh, the yard waste is, is tricky. You really have to do a traditional composting 
Uh, but a lot of us actually do have this uh, service. Like I live in the city of Alfreda and we have the service to, uh, that we uh, can put our yard waste in these uh, uh, paper bags. And there is a separate truck that comes and picks up these, uh, uh, these bags separately. And then that goes into a uh, composting service that the uh, service provider, the trash pickup uh, company provides. So uh, if you're not doing that today, and I, you know you can simply keep these bags for your uh, so, you know lawn service, uh, or if you're doing a lawn lawn yourself, use these bags. Uh, the only thing to remember is that make sure you have a separate pickup for these. If the trash uh, your your pickup is with the same uh, truck that is picking up your uh, trash, then these are not getting composted. They they are going straight to trash. So. So that's one thing to uh, to check on, and then you can put uh, things like your you know wilted flowers, uh, pineapple heads, things like that. Uh, not kitchen uh, scraps, but anything that would qualify as a uh, garden material, you can put that uh, into these bags. So again, I'm not going to focus on this. I'm going to focus mainly on the kitchen scraps. And here is a so why why what's the big deal, right? I'm already recycling. So what I found, this is my trash. This is one week of trash. I recycle pretty much everything. Uh, and uh, I counted my or inorganic recyclables for recyclables for that week were about 53 uh, ounces. And the uh, organic recycles, uh, the, you're, you know, you can see this is all kitchen scraps is about 73 ounces. So that's a lot more. The volume is less. It looks small, but weight wise, it's a lot more. And uh, this is my estimate. EPA estimates 21% 20, uh, household waste is organic. Your experience will vary based on your uh, lifestyle. If you eat less processed food and you know more uh, re uh, more vegetables, whatever, those things will generally increase your uh, organic waste. So you need to look at that. You need to look at and see if it is. Um, in my experience, for me personally, it was far more important to recycle the organic waste than the inorganic waste. And believe it or not, it actually takes more time to recycle inorganic waste than organic waste. That's another thing that I found. So I was losing out on a large uh, opportunity uh, and actually spending more time. Now I end up doing both, but if, uh, if you're going to do one thing, I would actually suggest do uh, composting than do recycling, uh, just based on the, uh, you know, uh, what you see here. So uh, the other, so so there is the volume uh, and the the weight. What what matters is the in the inorganic materials. If you trash them, they're going to sit there. And yes, that's harmful. But the organic materials going into your landfill is actually even more harmful. And there is generally a myth. Well, I put it in a uh, you know it's going to go into landfill. Why do I need to compost? It will get composted uh, you know by natural processes. Uh, in the landfill anyway, and that's a that's a big uh, misconception. Uh, landfills, especially in this country, they are packed heavily. They are uh, you know compacted just because uh, the uh, uh, you know there is there is a land issue, right? So so they compact those to the point where there is no uh, oxygen in these landfills. So what ends up happening is they're not going through a natural decomposition process, which requires uh, oxygen. And in the end, the uh, much worse gas, the biogas methane is, is generated. Uh, it is shorter lived than CO2 in the environment, but it is 84 times more potent than CO2. So it's actually better if you drive a gas guzzler than, uh, you know, than, than if you're not composting, right? By all means, you know, uh, because you're doing more harm by switching uh, uh, by not composting. So that's kind of the point that I came to that conclusion. Uh, these are some sources you can go check it out for yourself. Um, so typical, uh, you know, reasons not to compost is why well, I'm not a gardener and that, that's, you know, I, neither am I, I have never gardened. I don't want to garden. And, uh, my wife has a little veggie patch and we, you know, typical plant a uh, tomato plant and uh, two pepper plants and hopefully they uh, are, you know, they don't, they don't die. Uh, through the uh, end of the summer, and we get some veggies, right? But I'm not a gardener. Neither of us are. Uh, we don't have that many cold, that much cold winters, but some of you folks uh, uh, away from uh, Atlanta might. And then obviously, uh, if you're living in a apartment or something, then you'll have space issue, right? So those are typically the reasons why people don't get into uh, composting. So this is where Bokashi can help you: is you can uh, compost very easily uh, without spending a lot of time. Uh, pretty much all indoor composting. Uh, 
Uh, and so let's get into the uh, details here, right? So what is, what is Bokashi composting? So it's a Japanese method that the people in Japan have been using for a very long time. And uh, the idea is to uh, use uh, anaerobic fermentation process. It's essentially pickling. You're putting your kitchen scraps into a um, bucket and uh, making sure there is no uh, ox they're not exposed to oxygen. Uh, so that uh, they are, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, get, getting pickled. Uh, the final product is actually not a compost in a traditional sense. It's it's a soil additive, and I'll, I'll come to that. Uh, so that's the main difference. You're doing it indoor. It is anaerobic as opposed to aerobic uh, composting, uh, and it is really a soil additive and not not true compost. Um, the advantages or differences uh, from the traditional composting is because there is no decomposition, there is no foul smell. Uh, and I've had people, uh, some of them on this call have uh, seen it uh, and it's like, well, I can't smell anything. Uh, that's because there is no uh, rotting, there is no decomposition, right? Uh, because there is no decomposition, you can also put uh, things in it that you traditionally cannot put in or, or you cannot put in traditional composting like cheese and uh, meat. Uh, you don't need to put browns, uh, so like leaves, you don't have to go out and collect all the uh, leaves in fall and things like that. Uh, you obviously, like I said before, you do it indoor. It is a uh, soil additive. And because of all these, uh, there is a very little chance of going something wrong. I mean, it is idiot proof, uh, you know, no flies, no maggots, uh, odors, things like that. Uh, that's the beauty of it, that it is, it is really, really easy and it takes a very little time. So how do I do it? So these are some of the things that you're, uh, you're going to need depending on how you decide to do it. The most important thing is this bucket. Uh, I bought this on Amazon along with this um, um, brand that you see here. Uh, and you, you need two of these uh, typically, and I'll, I'll explain why. And uh, you can get them on Amazon uh, or you can make it yourself. There are enough you, uh, you know, DIY, uh, do it yourself videos that you can look to see how you can make uh, either the bucket or the uh, brand. So those things are possible. Uh, and then you're going to need something to store your kitchen scrap. I don't want to do, I, I, again, I, I'm lazy. I want to spend as little time doing this as, as uh, needed. So I'm not doing this daily. Uh, daily, I'm collecting kitchen scraps in this little uh, bowl that we have on our uh, kitchen counter. Uh, and then at the end of the day, uh, we put them uh, in a Ziploc bag and uh, put that in a uh, cooler bag. And that's also sitting on the uh, kitchen counter, right? But because it's in uh, like double bagged or whatever, you, you, you don't get any uh, orders from, uh, from this process. And then once a week is when I'm going to start using this. So uh, let's move on to that. Uh, the the process of uh, of actually doing it. Uh, so this is back in summer, and you know obviously at that time we had a lot more kitchen scraps, so that's why you're seeing this the whole uh, watermelon cut into small pieces. Uh, you'll put that into this bucket uh, with the Ziploc bag. It's even easier. I just dump the whole bag. I'm not even taking it from this and putting it in there and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then the brand that we saw uh, here, you take about uh, three uh, tablespoons uh, for an inch of layer of food waste. And you sprinkle that uh, all over the, uh, uh, the kitchen scraps. What that does is that provides the uh, carbohydrates and the, uh, 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 the um, microbes that are going to process the food without oxygen. So that's, those are the two ingredients in that uh, in that brand. And again, you can look it up. There are ways to make this yourself. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I just, uh, like I said, it's, I'm all, all about convenience. So I, uh, yeah, I, I bought pause? these. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, yeah. wanted to ask you one question here. I don't know that I heard you right. Um, so you said that you take the kitchen scraps and you collect it for, you know, you don't do this process every year. You collect it over the week and the week is, uh, once a week is when you add it to the Bokashi bucket. Yes. So when yeah, you yeah, you yeah. add it, you collect it in your Ziploc bag. But did you say you add yeah. the bag itself to the Bokashi bucket? No, no, no. So we'll we'll watch the. Or watch you empty the, video, the bucket. But, uh, yes, yes, yeah. I'll 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 put it into the bucket. So yeah, okay. we'll we have a video coming up. But here in this picture, what I did is I took all this and uh, you know put that in the bucket, right? The same thing. So uh, so we can take the Ziploc bag and you empty the Ziploc empty bag it. into okay. the bucket. Just 
Oh. This is a plug bag, and I see why you would ask this question. Yes, this is a plug bag here, and I'm yeah. I'm coming to that, right? So, <laughs> so you put, yeah, yes, yeah, so I I can see that, yeah. So you put all your kitchen scraps in here. You sprinkle the, uh, you know, three tablespoon per inch of layer of bokashi onto it. So again, uh, you you may have to do it more than once a week. Depends on how much kitchen scrap you generate. In summer, you may have more. In winter, you may have less. Uh, less, you know, it just depends, right? So depends on your habits. In in our house, we do it uh, once a week at least uh, for last. a uh, couple of months i believe this particular week in summer we probably did it more than uh, you know uh, once a week right so so once you're done with that then remember this is a, a anaerobic process so we have to make sure that this waste is not exposed to any oxygen that's where this plastic bag comes in so what you do is you put this ziploc bag or any kind of plastic it doesn't have to be ziploc i just happen to use one but uh, you just put a piece of plastic and you press everything down uh, and make sure that there are no air pockets in the way so uh, one of the things that you need to do is that's why i've cut up this watermelon uh, into smaller pieces if you have the watermelon rinds which are circular or semi circular whatever if you put them in there just like that that might create an air pocket and that can cause uh, bokashi to go bad so you oxygen is the enemy here so we got to make sure that uh, you know we cover it up with a uh, plastic and push everything down and then put the lid back and uh, seal the lid very um, uh, close uh, tight so that there is no air uh, going in and out so there is air in the bucket but it is separated by this uh, plastic right and as the bucket full uh, fills up the uh, air pocket becomes smaller and smaller but that air is never uh let go into the kitchen scraps that's the most important thing uh which is why i i personally like this brand if you go on amazon and look at their reviews those people will complain that oh this is very hard it's very tight but that's what you want you don't want something that is uh loose the 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 lid uh because you don't want any air going into the uh into the container the other thing is, is that also keeps the any kind of odors uh, in by having a tight lid right so the only odor you'll typically get is because of the pickling process it's going to create like a sour uh, vinegar type smell it's not uh, it's not uh, bad you don't you, you you might get some especially if you're very uh, sensitive you might get some uh, vinegarish uh, you know uh, um, smell but that again by ha- having the lid tight you will uh, protect it and then during the week once or every other day or so you uh, need to drain the spout what happens is all this material especially organic material as you know has a lot of water that water is going to this this uh, um, this material is going to shrink Uh, so this uh, this bucket looks pretty small right but it it actually holds four weeks of uh, organic uh, uh, trash for me uh, so that's because the material shrinks as it dehydrates and that water is getting collected down in this bottom portion of this bucket which you then have to drain and that's that's what you're seeing here uh, it is it is again it's it's a very acidic kind of uh, uh, liquid i don't do anything with it you can probably uh, dilute it it's very concentrated so you can dilute it and put it in your uh, garden if you want i don't again i'm all about convenience i just drain it hopefully it cleans the pipes in an organic manner and uh, you know that's about it but i'm not i'm not bothered with uh, losing the uh, uh, this uh, uh, this fluid because uh, yeah uh because I, i that's not my my goal is to reduce my carbon footprint and not necessarily get into gardening uh so that's what happens for about a month in my house uh when we are filling up this uh, this bucket uh, once the bucket is full then you will uh, just leave that bucket sitting there for two weeks at least and during that two weeks uh, it is these bacteria the uh, anaerobic bacteria they're going to work on that material and they're going to uh, you know uh, um, ferment it uh and that's the process that needs to happen so again you can leave it inside the house you can put it outside doesn't matter if you put it outside you you may want to protect it uh from any uh, you know creatures or anything but i i just leave it in the house again there's no smell uh i have had guests come over and they didn't know that there was uh, you know bokashi bucket Gosh, full, yeah. uh, sitting there right so yeah so so that's what happens uh then let's let's just, take a quick look once, at this yeah, uh, yeah go, ahead, so, go ahead one second one question that is coming yeah. from the audience uh the viewers yeah. this uh, process that you're using the plastic bag to press down on the vegetables that you're yeah. putting in so that there's no air, yeah. air gaps you don't necessarily need to use a plastic bag right you can use anything to 
make sure that it's yeah yeah you can yeah you can use anything it just uh, plastic is just tough right you you can use uh, if you use paper or something it might tear right that's why i use plastic it's generally uh, easiest thing and like i said i mean these are gallon size ziploc bags they are conveniently same size as this bucket so i, I again <laughs> i'm all about convenience i'm not trying to make some plastic instrument here right so <laughs> the gallon size bag fit i put take two of them i use that to uh, press it press it down and you'll see and this, that in the video that's coming up so this plastic bags is something that you reuse right then the you don't yes um, yes none of this yes absolutely yes the this plastic bag once the and i'll i'll come to that yeah good question okay. yeah this is not getting nothing is getting thrown we i will wash it and i'll reuse it uh, same thing with this is a plug bag that i'm collecting my uh, organic uh, waste is in that gets washed and reused so nothing is being uh, you know thrown into trash yep All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, it's about a three and a half uh, minute uh, video. Give me one second. I'm going to switch to the uh, video here. And or, uh... So the audio of this yes, video might the, be a little, uh, uh, little uh, weak when I uh, recorded it. So if you guys cannot hear, please let the uh, let us know in chat, then I can just talk through the video. But that's the video of uh, this. So as you can see, this bucket is uh, half filled, and uh, I recorded this while uh, putting in more um, Bokashi container to add more uh, uh, scraps to it. As you can see, the uh, plastic is stayed on. to keep any air out and uh, let's take the plastic off you can see on the the uh, the kind of fungus that's uh, growing is the healthy one that's, that's what we want to see from the uh... so this is what you want to see you want to see this white fungus that that means the bokashi is working if you see a blue or black kind of fungus that means there is rot uh the white fungus means that it is not rotting and that that's what you want to see the oh, focus so is the fungus so i'm going to add more uh, scraps and then toss in some um um the brine and then press things down again okay we are going to take some kitchen scraps from this uh, uh cooler that where i keep collecting over the week this is about a week's worth of uh, So here is a efficiency improvement that I did. I used to put it in the cooler and then I used to take it by hand and put it into the bucket. I was like, this is too slow. I want more convenience. So I started using Ziploc bags. Just put everything in a Ziploc bag. Just take it to the container and just turn it upside down. Dump everything. Saves me time. Uh, so you will find your own ways of improving this process. So you know you save time or whatever is uh, material. Either way, you got to get the kitchen scraps into the bucket. Uh, kitchen scraps as you can see um this toss them in so you're able to put eggshells also so what was the question agita so you're able to put eggshells as well you can put eggshells you can put even bones the problem uh, and i i have uh, 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 like put mango pits and things things like that those are very hard and they are not going to compost uh, uh, eventually and uh, i mean they'll eventually compost sorry but they are not going to compost uh, as fast as some of the other material right and that's what happens in the nature if you put bones uh, uh, you know bury them eventually they'll decompose right but that's not going to happen fast so i don't put any bones uh, i will put some uh, eggshells there okay This coffee filter uh, filters that just get them apart like that. You want about a inch of um, kitchen uh, scrap. There's some meat in there. uh that has gone bad so any of that stuff is is okay uh cheese meat anything doesn't really matter anything that was uh alive at some point
Now to add about uh, three tablespoons of uh, this uh, bran, just kind of generally, generously sprinkle. I might add some more. I think I may have added some more, more scrap than I typically do for because it's like a. Week. And so there is no. I mean, this is art. This is not science. Well, it is science, but it is art. So uh, you just put. Uh, if you put more bran, that's not bad. That's actually good. So always are on the side of caution and put more brand uh, if you feel, uh, because nobody's acting, you're not measuring it, whether it's one inch or one and a half inch or whatever, just, just put more brand. Weeks worth of scraps, I just want to toss in some more. More is always better than less. So best thing is to add some more. And then you put the plastic and push down. This is the important step that you really have to push it down so all the air goes out and uh, you don't really want to keep all the air out. That's At this point, just close the bucket, and uh, that's all there is to it. And then I think there is more space for about a week's worth of um, uh, kitchen scraps, based on how you know our typical consumption is. And that's this is the other thing that you want to make sure it's all snapped shut, so there's no air. And that's all there is to it. So yeah, so the, the uh, important uh, thing is the uh, closing the uh, bucket uh, properly, right? That is one of the most important things. Uh, so moving back to, uh, let me go full screen here. All right, and okay, so then what, right? So you do this for, uh, uh, you know, once a week, twice a week, if, if you have more waste, whatever, whatever works for you. And eventually the bucket is full. And like I said, you, you leave it unopened for two weeks and you keep draining that, what is called Bokashi tea, uh, you know, until, uh, until it's full. Once it's full, then you uh, put it aside for two weeks. This is where you, that's why you need two buckets because while the bucket is sitting and uh, fermenting, you can now start using your second buckets with your, uh, kitchen scrap. And then after two weeks, there is post-processing. So you're looking at about once a month uh, going out uh, and doing this post-processing. Uh, and that depends on, you know, uh, what your situation is. So uh, you can uh, uh, bury it in what's called a soil factory. And I'll go over that quickly here. Uh, you can bury it in your yard in a trench. Uh, this is similar to soil factory. You just do it in a pot if you're in an apartment and don't have a lot of space. Uh, and then you can also put it in your compost. And then you might ask, well, why would I do that? If I wanted to do that, I would have just done composting and I'll, I'll get to that. Um, so I've got three, uh, I'm, I've actually done all three and I actually, in the end, this is just something I started recently. And this is probably the most convenient thing to do, believe it or not. So I'll, I'll get to that. Um, so this is the soil factory method. So what it is, is I've created this, uh, I bought this on, again, Amazon. I love Amazon, uh, very convenient. Uh, bought this on Amazon. Uh, it's, a, it's a garden bed metal sides. Uh, I put it on a, uh, a plywood, piece of plywood, and then I'm gonna cover it up with this other piece of plywood. Uh, I put some topsoil as a uh, uh, bottom layer, threw in my bokashi. So this has been sitting in, the, in this container for about two weeks. And then after that, I, I uh, put that, uh, you know, uh, onto this uh, topsoil. Uh, and then I covered it up with uh, another layer of topsoil. It's about an inch uh, of uh, soil, inch of bokashi uh, or whatever you have, and then another, another inch of soil. Uh, so it's like a bokashi sandwich that you do in, the, in this uh, container. Uh, and then you cover it up with a uh, plywood or whatever and, uh, and uh, close it off. And... Uh, let it sit for another, uh, you know, two to three weeks. And in that process, uh, it is going to these, uh, now it is being exposed to the oxygen and now it's going to go through a uh, partial uh, aerobic decomposition and this material is going to get all uh, broken down. So this is some, so I opened this up in two weeks and you can see that most of the material is broken down. There's still something left uh, and that's, uh, so it'll all get broken down in another week. 
so in about three weeks, if you look at it, you will not be able to tell that this can includes any uh, kitchen scraps. Uh, at that point, the uh, material is still not composted in a traditional sense, but it is not visible. Uh, it is not going to attract any pest or anything. So you can take the soil and, and use it for gardening uh, or give it to your friend who might be gardener. Uh, and that's it. You're, you're done. And you have successfully you know, avoided putting your uh, organic material into, uh, into trash. Um, into landfills. So that's one way of uh, doing it. The other way is this is our uh, little garden bed that I mentioned before. And what I did is I uh, uh, dug up a trench here. So this is the garden bed. Uh, I dug up a little uh, trench here, dumped all the bokashi into that, uh, and then covered this is the bokashi going into the trench and then covered it up. Again, you're basically making a bokashi sandwich with soil bokashi and then soil it just happens to be a, uh, in the garden as opposed to in a uh, you know metal container that's covered this i left open it is not covered uh, i did notice that some creatures came and tried to dig it up and what happens in this case is because their sense of smell is much uh, better than ours right so they will come and try to uh, see what's here uh, once they taste it, though, then they realize it's too sour for them and they don't touch it. So they left it alone. Uh, nothing was really dug up and, you know, thrown all over the yard or something like that. Uh, so that's another way of doing it is just dig up, dig up, uh, you know, trench somewhere in your yard and uh, put the bokashi and cover it up. Um, so the pickling process is the key that kind of uh, makes the uh, waste unattractive to the creatures. Uh, and also, if you walk by it, you will not uh, smell anything. Uh, that's the uh, that's the other advantage. The last way of what I'm uh, going over here is a hybrid composting method, which is what I just started doing, and I'm actually liking this. Uh, again, it's, it's far more convenient than either of these two methods, uh, even though those two methods are convenient. This I find even more convenient. Uh, I got this gallon, 30-gallon uh, bucket uh, from uh, Home Depot or something, and then uh, made these holes. Uh, they're all over there at the bottom top, uh, they're just a few inches apart, uh, you know, three eighths of an inch hole, something, nothing, nothing big. Uh, they're on the top also. Uh, I had my uh, lawn service uh, keep a um, uh, bag of leaves and uh, yard waste in this uh, garbage bag that you that you see here. Uh, you can see the the uh, the top with the holes and all that. Uh, all I did was throw in some of this, uh, uh, you know, yard waste. Uh, it's basically leaves and lawn clippings and all that. Uh, put in my uh, bokashi from, you know, just again, dump the bokashi uh, container into that. Sprinkle some fertilizer uh, because it's going to need these uh, microbes are going to need some uh, nutrients. And that's what that fertilizer, a very small amount, like a one spoon, one uh, tablespoon of the fertilizer for bucket that size. And uh, then I had uh, somebody gave me existing compost because we need to introduce a uh, live uh, culture uh, to this. Uh, so that's another thing that I uh, put some ready compost or compost starter uh, into that and then cover it up again with some uh, leaves. And uh, there is a, a ratio of uh, three times the uh, three to one three times the uh, uh, leaves uh, to one times the uh, bokashi, something like that. And again, you're making a, a sandwich in, in this process. Uh, put it on a raised, uh, uh, you know, uh, place. So there is the water. Again, same thing. This is going to, uh, the water is going to go in. Uh, the organic material is going to lose its own water. Uh, that's going to come out uh, like any composting process. So you want to keep it on a raised platform. Uh, and that's it. And then leave it there. And uh, uh, this is, one week later, I checked the temperature uh, of the compost pile, and I, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, outside temperature is 66 degrees, and inside in the compost is 109 degrees. That means the compost is cooking. The bacteria are at work, and that's why they, the heat is generated as they uh, break down this, uh, this organic material. Uh, I will, uh, I, all I did was, again, uh, you've heard, you might have heard, well, you have to roll the compost and things like that. Very easy. I just uh, roll, I just shook this bucket. I didn't really need anything fancy. Just, uh, you know, uh, you can just uh, shake it up. Uh, and what that is doing is, is as the material gets compacted, uh, you want, or you can get a pitch, you know, you can get a fork and, and uh, uh, your garden uh, fork for 
a rake or something and then you can use that also all it is doing is 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 uh, making the compacted material less compact so air can flow that's the whole point and that's about it uh, and then leave it like that i'm going to continue once a month i'm going to put my bokashi into this again to the sandwich uh, this based on what i'm seeing this bucket will last me for about 4 5 months uh then i'll leave it alone i've got another bucket uh, this bucket will sit there and about 6 months time uh the compost will be done and this is you know uh, it took me uh it takes me about uh, 10 minutes or so weekly at uh, inside uh, and then once you get this set up with the bucket with holes and you can buy this online also there are uh buckets like this available online uh that will you know to dump everything and layer it in the leaves uh will take you another 30 minutes once a month if that uh, i don't think it will take that much but that's about it there is really and you if you walk by it you will not uh, uh get any orders because of the uh, composting i have not seen any creatures come out and do anything with it uh so that's basically it this is the easiest way you can uh uh you know get your uh, organic waste out of your uh, trash and avoid going into uh, landfill um there are some uh, good websites bokashi living is one of them they they have much better how to videos and all that so i encourage you to uh, take a look there is a contrarian view and that's mainly focused on uh, that it is not bokashi is not composting and uh, it is not it is not composting in a traditional sense uh but by all means take a look at this uh uh link also that will give you some idea of uh, you know maybe more details but it works is is all i care uh and my trash has has gone down significantly as a result of it so uh i think that is all i had geeta so i will turn it back over to you <laughs> that's fine this has been very very interesting cuz especially because we've done several webinars on I think what what you would call the traditional method of composting that's the aerobic method right. so whether it's you know open wire bin or the um, rolling tumbling composter but they all required air moisture and of course the green and browns to be managed in a particular ratio but uh, this is the first one I'm seeing about you know completely anaerobic uh, process of composting yeah. so the one question that I I mean that had was um, when you take it out to the uh, you know you had those three options where you put this yeah. uh, plywood board down and the um, steel uh, the metal uh, bed now in that one while it's cooking there does it also have this compost tea generate wouldn't you have the leaching uh, happen yeah so uh, to some extent yes and that's why the you know the the uh, obviously i've just put this on top of the plywood right so there is enough gap that it will uh, it will uh, leak out yes but right. uh, at this point it is not really bokashi because it is exposed to air right so at this point right. it is just breaking down right and it is getting to an aerobic process uh, and breaking down this material and the main purpose of this is so that when you look at it it doesn't look bad it doesn't smell bad it doesn't have any uh, attraction to the pests stuff like that right uh it just means that now you can take the soil and put it in your pots and you know pans or whatever uh mm -hmm. if you had put any kind of bones or uh, uh any like uh, i'd put some mango pit uh you know those will stay they are not going to decompose that quickly this is very hard materials uh, that's true. you might see them in there right so so that's that's the only thing so um but yeah this is uh, this is and uh, you know you once you're you leave it there for 3 weeks or something then take this out and you know you can use it in the garden uh, and then this is again available for you to uh, use it for the next batch perfect and then, i mean i this has definitely been a very very interesting webinar and you explained it step by step so well um looking at the questions that we have from some of the audience i think you have answered all of them in terms of how long the process takes and whether we can make the bins on our own versus buying it I think yeah. they are available in um, Amazon, but it's also possible to, you know, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, then you can easily make yeah, the absolutely. bin on your own. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. make uh, sure just, that if you're making the bin on your own, make sure that it is very, very airtight, and it needs to have a spout at the bottom and a gap, uh, so that you can uh, you can collect all the uh, lichen or whatever it is called, the technical term I don't know, uh, for the water runoff, and then uh, yeah, the bokashi tea. and uh, yeah and then then have it drain right so 
uh there's a question here can you put fish chicken or cooked rice dal yeah absolutely i i put I, in my latest bucket i put uh, i like to eat fish and not waste it but uh, and that's part of it that don't uh, you know uh, waste food but it does happen and yes i have put chicken i have put fish skin uh i have not put cooked rice but i have put uh, pasta you can put cheese any organic material is fine if you put something hard like chicken bones that's not going to uh, work in the sense that i mean it will work it's just going to take a very long time uh, but yeah you can put pretty much any uh, organic material i wouldn't put uh, things like cardboard and you know that you can uh, uh, recycle differently if you can or uh, you know you, you have to trash it uh, you if you're doing the third method the and this is another one of the reasons why i'm switching to this method is because i can actually put uh, you know i uh, chipotle uh, or any of these uh, takeout places have the compostable uh, cardboard boxes right those you cannot they're not bokashi is not meant for that those will have to be traditionally composted so those i will put directly into this yeah, you can put them in bokashi but then not nothing is going to happen to them like if you use a compostable uh, uh, paper towels they are going to sit there in the bokashi as is and until you post process them oh, so it's only the something that has lived before that really gets yeah. bokashi composted yeah. because you're yeah. denying it yeah. the oxygen yeah. yes exactly the main thing is to pickle the whatever was living so that it doesn't rot and smell okay and uh, there is no smell like you say and i'll take your word for that <laughs> i have another video i had this uh, recycling uh, for my uh, seminar for my uh, uh, neighbors and mm -hmm. uh, we were sitting in our uh, porch and i had a bokashi bucket sitting under a table for an hour and they had no idea i brought that out and said did you smell anything i was like nope we didn't smell anything uh, so yeah no there is no smell uh i think some of the folks uh, on this call have been in my house and they have said yeah there is no smell uh, so yeah there is absolutely no smell now again i i I'll, i'll say it differently it depends on how tight so if you make sure your bucket is tight and you do the uh, you know the 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 pressing down with the plastic and all that process correct so if you do it correctly yes there is no smell now if you let air go in then it's going to rot and then yes it will smell uh, so that's the key thing that make sure you're doing things correctly the bokashi brand that you said um yeah. is it uh, something that you buy at the yeah. store or yeah so that actually this uh, bucket uh, i bought a kit if you will that comes with two buckets and uh, two bags of brand one uh, you know for each bucket and i've been using it for about 5 months now so these things last it's not that uh, you know that they'll go uh, they'll finish fast uh the uh, brand again you can uh, it's 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 basically cereal with some organic uh, so, some uh, you know bacteria in it essentially is how one way to look at it uh it has the carbohydrates and the bacteria so you can actually make it yourself and in fact i found some user comments on this blog where this woman is actually making the uh, uh, brand herself uh and it didn't seem like complicated process but yeah i'm not doing it uh if it's on amazon i'm buying it but that's me <laughs> you you may want to do it yourself absolutely now i'm sure the gardeners in this group and i'm putting on my gardening hat right now when i say the tea that you show, you know in the one of the video the slides that you had where you had the leachet being going down your drain um yeah. it was really going down the drain because i would have collected it and in diluted it and just poured it in your lawn that would be the best um because it is you can, full of yes. um nutrients for the lawn if i yes, if yes, if it follows yes. the same thing as compost tea i'm not still yes, sure yes, about but, that part but i presume it's still it's, it's the same compost tea uh, right yeah there is there is good discussion on both these websites about uh, about that also it is very concentrated though so you will have to dilute it uh, a yes. lot and again I, i am all about convenience so no i'm i'm not doing it uh, it will clean my pipes hopefully <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um any um, other question? Let's see. Any tips for winter? So in winter as well does it work? So again the indoor process will work right because it's at a, uh, your indoor temperature. So whether it is uh, so the bokashi itself will work when you put it outdoor uh, and this I'm uh, going to go back to you know this process here. 
This will also work. It will break down. But the actual composting, which happens beyond this three-week period, right, uh, that will slow down in winter just like it slows down for any other. Right? Right. Yeah. Eventually, everything has to be uh, has to go through organic uh, decomposition. All we are doing with this is getting the odors out, getting the uh, foul odors, and the uh, you know making it in, unattractive uh, to the creature. So when you put it out in the yard, you don't feel like you're you know literally throwing your garbage into yard, right? That's basically it. Eventually, when you when I take this out and put it into my garden beds or whatever, uh, that decomposition will take whatever time it takes in nature uh, for that type of material and the environment, whether it's winter or summer or, and all that. There's one more question that I'm seeing. I think you answered yeah. it just now. To avoid multiple steps, can you put the kitchen trash directly in the backyard trench and then sprinkle the bokashi directly there? No, because you have to do it in an inorgan, uh, sorry, anaerobic in a, uh, manner, right? So you, the right. pickling will not happen. Remember that that is the reason why you have to put it in this um, in this um, bucket and uh, uh, do all this, uh, you know, uh, plastic and uh, uh, deprive the waste of uh, of um, uh, oxygen. If you put kitchen waste directly into a trench and cover it up, it will eventually decompose. Yes, you would have, but it will smell. It will smell, it will attract rodents, uh, depending on what you have put in there. They will dig, it, dig up your uh, trench and all of that. The Bokashi brand is not going to do anything there to uh, prevent right. that because it hasn't gone through the Bokashi process. Right. So I think it's, it has to be started indoors. And it is a very convenient way of composting, especially in the winter, because... It makes it easier than not having to go out. I mean, if you can... There is a question here uh, on the chat that is basically Bokash is hastening the composting process. Not so. It is not actually hastening anything. It is simply making the material unattractive to pests and odors. That's the bottom line. Uh, therefore, then you can, uh, you know, uh, dispose it off. It, the, uh, the decomposition process is uh, driven by nature. If it takes uh, six weeks for a banana peel to decompose, it's going to take six weeks for a banana peel to decompose. I just don't want to see that banana peel in my yard and smell it and have squirrels go after it, right? That's, that's what this is about. It is, it is not going to speed up the uh, the process uh, any any more. It will break down. So the banana peel is going to be broken down into smaller pieces or whatever that you cannot recognize that it is a banana peel, but it is not uh, composted at that point. Uh, so after this process, after two weeks of sitting in the bucket and three weeks of two to three weeks of sitting in the uh, soil factory and all that, so it is still not composted. This is and that's what you will see here in this uh, contrarian view that it is not really uh, compost, which is true. It, it, the compost will happen in your garden just like anything else, but it doesn't, uh, uh, that's not the, uh, uh, that's not material to me when it composts. As long as I don't smell it, then I don't have any uh, rodents going after it. Absolutely. So I think this is, this is a good intermediate process, if you will, to have started inside the house for people, especially who may not be gardeners, who don't have yeah. the need to go or step out into their garden. But still, you know, it's a very useful thing to do at home so that you all can actually compost all the kitchen waste. Uh, I mean, exactly. for a, speaking from a gardener perspective, yes, most of us step out into the yard yeah. and we look at the end result of reach, having the compost reach the garden. So we look for other methods of composting in the garden. So if a person doesn't move out into the garden for whatever reason, this is a very good yeah, way. Yeah, and let's say you're... You're you're in an apartment, uh, exactly. condo, whatever, right? You don't have a garden. Well, you can make this in a pot, right? Which is what the fourth this method was that you can just mm -hmm. take a, uh, you know, your uh, uh, a pot or a, uh, a tote or something, some kind of container, and right. do the small container that you can do this sandwich in and leave it in your balcony uh, or something like that. And and again, it will not have any odor or attract any creatures. Absolutely. So this has been very, very informative. I don't see any other questions from on the you know, Google Doc that's being updated constantly by our volunteers who are watching the Zoom chat and the YouTube chat. Uh, but sure. um, if anyone has any further questions from you know based on this uh, very, very informative webinar, uh, please do feel free to send us an email, send us a message. Um, on this, so, you know, with your question, and we will definitely have them answered. Uh, there was one thing that this, all the registered participants will be getting the uh, PowerPoint slides 
the deck. And uh, that would have that link, which Vijay referred to, you know, he, he talked about one of the slides and said, I have, it has a link to the recycling. That's where you will get to see it. And um, I mean, at this point, I, I really would like to say thank you to Vijay. Vijay, would you mind going to the next slide? Yeah. yeah. And um, thank you to Vijay for having given us this wonderful webinar. It was very, very informative. And um, I mean, I, I just say, yeah, you know, I'm fascinated by the different ways of composting and the different efforts that people, you know, people have understood and are coming up with. It's more than, it's not just composting for the garden. It's more in terms of yeah. keeping things out of the landfill. So essentially giving back to earth what it's, you know, offered to us. So by, you know, ch channeling things directly to the landfill, to, to your trash, we are not helping sustain this uh, planet. So I think if any of all of us have to hold hands together and do what we can. And while we talk of that, I just want to quickly tell you a little bit about green cells projects that we run, some of our key projects where it's a win-win. You know, it's a some of the projects are things that you all can participate in and make use of our services that we offer. And we on the same hand, we would like you all to partner with us, join us as green cell volunteers, may not be volunteers who are doing this very actively, but if you have a couple of hours and one of the uh, projects interests you, please do reach out to us and see how you can, you know, we can join hands and make this happen on a larger scale in all our neighborhoods. Yes. Know, sorry to interrupt you, but this food rescue is a perfect example. My neighbor is helping her. She's not nothing to do with green cells. She just has time, uh, you know, uh, she goes to the bagel a shop twice a week, uh, picks up, brings it to me, and then I take it and uh, donate, you know, deliver it to a uh, food bank, right? So if you have uh, uh, any time during the day, uh, reach out and, you know, you can do some of these things. Uh, you don't have to be part of Green Cell or do a dramatic change in your life or anything. And this, especially food rescue, is, is very dear to me because it uh, not only uh, takes the organic waste out of landfills, uh, but also helps uh, feed uh, hungry people. Uh, there is, yeah, there is really no reason uh, for anybody to s go to sleep hungry in this country. Absolutely, or anywhere for that matter. And we have yeah. the other program that we do is on glass recycling. No, I, I, um, a couple of our volunteers run this neighborhood glass recycling projects. So they kind of become the key person in their neighborhood to collect glass because not all the recycling companies are actually collecting the glass and uh, so we don't have a way of recycling it easily. So some of our volunteers vol volunteer to do that in their neighborhood. So there's the collection points. And uh, it's in incredible to see the amount of glass that we have collected and then taken to the recycling center. So that's where we can pitch in to help out. And we have our utensil learning programs which is a very popular program. And if you have a party or a dinner and you don't want to use... Um, if, if, you know, if there is an opportunity to use, uh, com, co, you know, compostable or reusable uh, dinnerware, please do reach out to us. We have stainless steel plates, tumblers, uh, bowls, anything that you can just take. Uh, it's This program is run for free. We have uh, people offering to help us, you know, either in kind or in cash for this so that uh, because it, it's just a win-win for everyone because we don't want... Uh, anything going to the landfill as much, you know, as much as we can, let's keep it out of the landfill. And if you go to the next slide, uh, Jay. thank you. Then the other two programs that we have is compost with the body. And this is very much in line with what we had today, the webinar. If you all want to start doing Bokashi composting and you still have some questions about it, we have this program called compost with the body. We'll help you out to figure out which composting method will suit you the best because each of us choose to do different types of composting, whether it's vermi composting or the open wire bin or Bokashi, whichever one. Depends on your lifestyle, your needs. But so we can work with you on a one-on-one. -on -one. We just pair you off with one of our volunteers as a buddy who would talk to you and handhold you through the process just so that we're not doing something wrong. We don't see too many maggots. All of us have gone through this learning process and the learning curve. And now having done it, for a couple of years or you know, more than that, we are all a little more experienced and we know what the do's and don'ts are. So we are here and we will definitely be able to sign you on with a mentor who would help you walk through this process. Likewise, we have a trash audit uh, program 
where we help you to reduce your trash. But this is nothing but helping you to identify items that would could be channelized to the recycling centers, to be recycled in the variety of ways, and also the organic uh, you know, kitchen waste that's generated, not to go into the trash, but to go into a compostable uh, methodology. So basically, get composted in any which way you want. So with that, uh, I will leave you all today and uh, wanted to just remind you once more about our January webinar. That's on 9th. I know that the slide I showed you had the 9th date, but the, but the poster had the incorrect date of December. We had planned it for December, then we moved it to January. So please do mark your calendars and look, we look forward to having you all join us on Jan 9th for the um, webinar on sustainable investment. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody.